You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means it is time once again to gather here together for the bi-weekly options extravaganza known as the option block, what the cool kids call the old OB. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-scintillating network upon which so many of you are binging. By the way, I don't get around to saying hello and welcoming to all of the new folks who keep joining us in the secret club all the time. Welcome to all of you out there. I know the new year has been a particularly robust period. A lot of people look like they're getting interested again in the world of options and they want to take their trading to the next level. They want to get the live stuff. They want to get the exclusive stuff. Love the members from all over the world too. That's really been fun to see, including my producers told me this morning, our first, our first secret club member from Vietnam. I know we see them a lot from Europe and Australia and a lot of other parts of the world, not so many from Vietnam. So that's always fun to see new countries making it into the secret club. Where do you go to learn more? The options insider.com slash secret club is the place to go to join the worldwide party. Of course, however you listen live after the fact, we do love you all. Keep sending in those questions, those comments. We do love to hear from all you, especially on a day like today. It is mail block Thursday after all. So if you haven't taken advantage of that, of course, all you in the Secret Club can bump it up to the live and get bumped to the top of the list. And let's see who's joining me on the old program today. First, let's go out to the quiet, nay the sleepy, nay the tranquil Hamlet, known as St. Charles. We are joined once again by the list of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Management. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the program, sir. Always a pleasure to be here. And Mr. Uncle Mike, I do have a surprise for you. I know it's not the Monday show. It's not the guess that 80s wrestler show, but I do have to just I have to just cut in with this because it is so timely and so fun. I was dragged, maybe not so willingly, but I was dragged to a recent wrestling event in Chicago last night. My little guy did want to go see the uh, the return of CM Punk to Chicago. He was excited about that. So we did it socially distanced, stayed away from people, double masked the whole nine yards. Wasn't a huge fan of being in crowds, but we did it. Nonetheless, it was fun. We made it uh, the safest way you could do it in an event like this. And lo and behold, Uncle Mike, who should come out about halfway through the show? My little guy elbows me, goes, Dad, I think that's Jake the Snake Roberts. And sure enough, it was Jake the Snake. A stone's throw from me, Uncle Mike. Jake the Snake Roberts. If I had a beer in my hand, I could have thrown it and hit him. What say you to that revelation, that stunning revelation? Well, I wouldn't want to throw any stones or beers at Jake the Snake. He'd give you the DDT and put Damien on you. But, um... I think that's really cool. I think it's good that Jake the Snake is still active in the wrestling world. Um, That's just really cool that you got to experience that with your son. 
I, I'm yeah, envious. I, I wish my son liked pro wrestling. <laughs> he just my son just likes this football nonsense that I got to deal with. Yeah, the time. football. He likes that too. But yeah, it's funny because uh, if I had known Jake the Snake was going to be there, I, I probably would have been a little bit less reticent <laughs> to go check it. I was like, oh, these this AEW. I don't know these guys, but yeah, there was hey, Jake the Snake comes out, kind of changes the tune out there. And you know who else is excited? Just tangentially from hearing about Jake the Snake because he loves nothing. We've got him into it now, listeners. He won't shut up. He's IMing us. He's DMing us. He's emailing us all the time questions about 80s wrestling. It is the Rock Lobster himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. Rock Lobster, welcome back to the program. And as I told you before the show, we can't talk nothing but 80s wrestling the entire show. We have to talk some options. I, I know you want to talk more 80s. That'll be Monday. Okay, sir? <laughs> Well, my question is, how did you see him if he's wearing a mask? Was his whole head covered? Well, he wasn't. The wrestlers don't wear the mask, and the managers uh, don't wear. He was uh, on a just, microphone talking. Yes. Ah, uh, uh, just the just the hoi polloi in the in the audience watching the whole. Action. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can't get COVID from a wrestling event. That COVID oh, respects wrestling. Of events. course, it, it does. I think it's outside the uh, the purview of the WWE. They do not allow the COVID in the, the wrestling. Let alone the guy maybe a few seats from me who didn't really want to wear a mask the whole time. Who I was considering giving a DDT to halfway through the show. I restrained myself as we keep on rolling right on into <laughs> the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Trading Block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading out there. And uh, quite a bit of red on the screen, a bit of a departure from what we've seen earlier in the week where it seemed like the markets were determined to recover from the aggressive sell-offs that we've had throughout the rest of the previous week and, of course, the whipsaws. We didn't even see a lot of those reversals and reversions that we've been seeing out there a lot of late where the market sells off in the morning, then it rallies, or it rallies in the morning, then it sells off. We had pretty much an uninterrupted upward trajectory for most of the week. Coming into today, though, that, uh, that's changing a little bit. Some big names popping off in the after hours. Not exactly lighting the world on fire. Facebook, they came for Facebook last night off almost 25%. At one point there in the after hours, just a drubbing there in Facebook land. Apparently, everyone who's going to use Facebook is on Facebook now. So new user growth, new user acquisition, maybe a little bit of a challenge. Obviously, other areas are dragging on them as well. The Oculus division sounds like it's not exactly burning up the profit charts and a bunch of other things. Of course, the threat of tech regulation lingering over all of these big tech names. It seems like the only thing they can agree upon on both sides of the aisle is that they both hate big tech and they're coming for them. So all of that laying over them, all that weighing on the markets today as well, Snap and others also not exactly lighting the world on fire. That means coming into showtime, we are seeing pretty much all the major indices off nearly a percent, if not more. The Dow holding out the laggard right around that 1% level to the dark side. S&P off about one and three quarters percent when we kicked off the show. NASDAQ off 2.65%. When we kicked off the show, that means when we came in into the showtime and right now we're seeing Vol continuing to tick back up after coming off most of the week. Coming into the start of the show, we had VIX Cash right around the 24 handle. That puts it down about one and a half points from last show. So still down from Monday's show, but getting a lot of that back. I wouldn't be surprised if we continue on this trajectory that we're we're unched by the latter portion of the end of this show. Even uh, VIX, of course, the Vol of Vol at about a 122. That's down about six points, so not quite at that pandemic 150 level or above, but frothy, still pretty juicy out there. VXX at about a 20 and two-thirds. That puts it down a little over a point from where it was this time. Last show, UBXY, same deal, was at a 14.35 when we kicked off the show. That puts it down a little over a point as well. I wouldn't be surprised if that one has to yeah, put UBXY up to about 14.70 or so now, so that's down. Less than a point from Monday's show. And Ball Q, of course, NASDAQ feeling its oats to the dark side there off well over 2% right now. Ball Q, the at the money ball of the NASDAQ, at about a 27.75 when we kicked off the show. That was the only one that was already up on the week. I was up about three quarters of a point. <laughs> so Ball Q, NASDAQ this whole time has really been leading the charge to the upside and to the downside. So a lot to unpack. I know he's giddy about Jake the Snakes. So let's go out to him first. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir. Giddy about that. Maybe not so giddy about these markets, which are decidedly not Uncle Mike type of markets. I would say that this market is kind of going through a metamorphosis. Would you agree? How long have you been sitting on that one, sir? And may I suggest oh. you put it back where you found it? 
<laughs> all morning. Thought of it early in the morning. I've been looking forward to the show all day. <laughs> Nothing better than a pun to put a smile on Uncle Mike's face. That's why we call him Uncle Mike. Is that not the uncleist of jokes, listeners? Oh, that, that's a bad one, I know. But uh, nonetheless, uh, it is. But anyway, just in looking at this, I... I, I I think that there's just a lot of fear right now with what Facebook is doing, just that uh, they fe- the market feels that Facebook, uh, the fact that they're not getting any more user growth uh, could be a bad thing. Meta is kind of an interesting stock, I think, in general, because just with the, the metaverse that's going on with people that are paying for online real estate and and I'm, and I'm not talking real real estate. I'm talking real estate that exists only in the online world, and uh, it's 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 a very interesting story. So I, I'm not sure that I, if I did individual stocks, I would consider taking a position in Facebook off of this giant drop for what's been happening with it for the longer term, of course. Um, but I like. Uh, just in looking at some of the other names in it, uh, Apple, Apple's down 0.4% on the day to day. When you look at that, that's kind of more of a an accurate representation of where the the real world is, so to speak. Um, Google is down with the S and P, uh, whereas like the Qs, they're down three percent. Google's just kind of matching the S and P right now. Um, Netflix. Uh, Netflix is something to where uh, it is down with the NASDAQ being driven down like it is. It's actually down more. It's down over 4%. So we're getting kind of a mixed message from the fangs, if you will. Uh, And then, of course, with uh, Facebook itself, or I'm sorry, I should say Meta, even though I really don't like saying Meta, that's down 26%. And then when you get a a name like Facebook being down such an insane amount of money, uh, that's what's dragging down the market. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Uh, We can talk all we want about rates going up. We can talk all we want about the Ukraine. When a big stock like Facebook gets that much of a hit taken to it, um, it's it's just not going to be good for the market as a whole. Uh, The for some clients, I actually do have a skew position in Facebook uh, to where I was able to set it up to where it was a zero cost, zero risk trade to where the calls were priced so much higher than the puts. I could go two years out and uh, not every client has the same strike price, but essentially I could have it set up to where over the course of two years, you get between roughly a zero to um six to eight percent rate of return over the course of two years but you're guaranteed to not lose anything uh looks like that trade's not going to end up so well but we got two years to have it come back we'll see uh so that is one position that i have in it but that was based on the fact that facebook has really nice options on it uh, or it had just the call skew there was more calls trading than the puts or more call buyers than the puts so that was one i wanted to take advantage of uh so I think that's just the big story right now is, is this going to trickle into other things? Um, Not to steal too much thunder from around the block, but we do have non-farm coming tomorrow. So that is something that could play a factor into the markets. But for right now, I think that it just the fact that arguably one of the top five, top eight stocks in the entire stock market is down 26%. I think that kind of bodes well for this market. Uh, Plus the fact that we have been rallying. I believe this is the first time that the S&P is down in five days. And we're going to have a pullback. But the fact that one of the big dogs, which Meta is, can go down 26%, and we're only down a little over 1.5% in the market after the market's been rallying like it has for the past few days, I'm kind of bullish, honestly. But that's just me. I'm always bullish. That's all I got. Somehow I knew you could turn Facebook selling off 26% into into a bullish narrative. That's why I go to you first on days like this, to give people a ray of sunshine, Uncle Mike, ever the optimist out there, loving himself a little bit of the old FB. By the way, I always thought Alphabet was was the worst artist formerly known as, but Meta has definitely given it a run for its money. I do not like Meta. And the fact that now it has been adopted, everyone's talking about the Metaverse, Meta, Meta, Meta. 
they have not done any favors to society by promulgating that name <laughs> out there. But yeah, beaten up 26% to the dark side right now. Who thought we'd been saying that out there in Facebook land? Mr. Rock Lobster, we turn our gaze to you now and to your usually mild manner. In a day like today, we're, we're not quite busting out the logins, but we are logins adjacent, at least right now. Maybe we also want to hear from your, your not mild mannered alter ego, Ballmancer. Well, Volman is uh, I just so here is what I would say is, OK, I'll, I'll give you a guess right now. Seeing the kind of the action in the queue. What would you guess nine day Vol and VIX is right now with VIX trading 2418? Yeah, I'll make it easy for you. Is it is it much higher than 24 or is it much lower than 24 about 24? Nine day realized in VIX options. No, no. Nine day, nine day VIX, just the nine day VIX. Oh, just the nine day VIX. Okay, I'm gonna say yeah. it is a nine day above twenty four. Right, right. You would you would think right that this sell off is producing um, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of angst in the short term options, right? Looking for it's not. It's actually it's dead flat to the cash. It's twenty four twenty six. Is oh. not taking a snap. Just right now. the last the nine days is a pretty volatile frame of reference. A lot has happened in nine days. <laughs> it is right, but you you would think that. You would be seeing the nine day trading at a premium, right? Like a pretty fair premium to the cash fix in a, a you know in a market that's starting to sell off, right? Because as as the market sells off and people freak out, they're going to look for the short term because that's where the cheap bang for the buck is, and uh, involved generally goes up, and you have that kind of backwardated curve. And and that's what I I kind of I agree with Mike. Um, I normally do because of course we both live in the middle of nowhere. So that's that's pretty why we agree with each other. As opposed to the city boy, the city slicker that goes to the big shows and watches famous professional. Hey, wrestling. all I'm saying is Jake the Snake doesn't come to the shores of Maine. All right, he comes he to downtown Chicago. Except that's all I'm fish. saying. <laughs> he probably maybe he does fish out there. I can see that, but uh, he's not um, on a microphone on the shores of Maine. That's all I'm saying. No, exactly. He's like, oh, okay, it's a takedown. Uh, so what I I find that the uh, there is not enough of a lift in VIX to support the sell off. So I don't think we're gonna have like the sell off is sort of. I agree. It's, I think it's limited to Facebook. I also think that, you know, I think Facebook is dealing with its own problems, right? I don't try to think of a company that's had worse press in the last year than Facebook with all this censoring and the this and the that and the in the internal breaks from all those whistleblowers. And um, I so I think Facebook has turned some people off uh, and they've lost users. And um, uh, another thing is Apple seems to have kicked them in the teeth uh, with the way they've uh, kind of steered the advertising data of uh, giving people a choice to kind of opt out. So uh, Facebook is, they've been growing at an amazing pace uh, as a company. So I, they just, they had one of those earnings where, you know, just stuff slowed down a little bit. Um, and I, and I think well, rightly so. Now the second part that Mike talked about is, <clears throat> I don't know if you remember, but Facebook IPO'd, and, you know, it was it's mostly just a computer app, right, in the early days. And it was like, oh, you know, maybe that $40 IPO. And then, like, everybody was just, oh, Facebook, oh, you know, even though it was made profitable, I think they sold it to the team. Yeah, they, cr they crushed it. They crushed it right after the IPO, yeah. Yeah, and they're like, this stock sucks. And all the people are saying, all the people are like, I'm a believer at 40. And then it went to 17. And then, of course, you know, very few believers when a stock is over down over 50%. So, and then what happened, what I thought, anyway, at least I was watching it, is, okay, are they going to make the move to the phone? Like, that's what Zuckerberg basically is like, he went all in, right? And so, you know, people like him or don't like him or whatever, whatever. But it was, he's like, we're going all in and getting on everybody's device, um, which I would argue probably set the stage for the next, what, six years, seven, eight years of Facebook growth all through the phone, right? And then it becomes a, then you have the pandemic and, it, you know, so now he says, okay, the next big thing could be this virtual space and I'm going to go spend a ton of money on it. And, you know, and he's making another big, what I would call a 
you know, like setting the tone for the company for the next 10 years. So you can agree with them or disagree with them. Uh, I think they should do a lot better job of free speech and all that, but those are all political things. Um, but this whole thing, like if he's right, you know, okay, we're going to set up a virtual world. Now, uh, I think the stocks of a lot of a lot of the uh, chip stocks went like crazy on that news. Um, so you, you think about it like, wow, this, you know, I, and uh, my guess is probably a buying opportunity. And I, and I definitely have quandaries on like, I will trade the thing. Um, I actually closed some short puts on it yesterday <laughs> before, right? Like literally five minutes before the close. I'm like, this is up enough. I made my money and I'll just see what happens tomorrow. Um, so I'll be selling a strike like $75 lower, which is hard to believe today. Um, so I, like I have, but I'll still trade it. You know, I'm still like, I'm a little bit, uh, uh, mercenary like that, but like he's betting the hole. He's like making a bet on something huge that nobody really like, nobody knew exactly that the phones would take over as big as they took over when they did that in what, 2012 or whatever, 2013, um, you know, phones were big and it was like, ooh, everybody was getting like, it was still an Apple Blackberry, Apple Blackberry thing. Um, clearly the right decision. Um, so now he's doing the next big bet. How much will it cost? What will this metaverse look like? Who knows, right? Nobody knows. Uh, but I, I think it's an interesting proposition nonetheless. And he could probably already see, right, like that. And uh, and it probably is no small you know thing that like wow I I could get screwed by Apple or I could get screwed by Google on ad advertising somehow so I need to create my own uh, my own internal space right um, so my guess is this is the next big bet I don't know um, you know I think it'll 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 def it'll decide whether the company becomes a two and a half trillion dollar market cap company if you create some kind of space like this so again. Like Mike said, very interesting. I think there's a lot of interesting technology things right now. Um, you know, the market, we got a relatively high, high realized vol. And there's people are sketchy, you know, and so they're just dumping the stock because they're worried, right? Um, uh, but anyway, I think it's, a, it's an interesting time. Um, and you're basically making a bet on can Facebook create um, right now. Like they certainly are going to have revenues. Right, but are they going to have the breakneck growth they've had over the last ten years? Probably not, unless they're able to create like a new universe, right? Which is what they're trying to do. So, again, that's I think that's the bet you're making right now if you buy Facebook at this level. Um, so, see what happens. I think it's easier just to sell puts that are seventy dollars out of money and just wait um, and see what happens because uh, Facebook still makes a lot of money. They do have a lot of cash. Uh, but that doesn't mean the stock can't swing, you know, another down 10 percent, up 10 percent, whatever, you know, on a uh, between now and, you know, the next six months, which I think is going to be like you have to think about it. Is it going to be a dead money stock for the next six months um, because of they're investing in growth? And when you invest in growth, stocks don't do much. Um, so I think that's where we find ourselves. But as far as vol man goes, seeing the VIX curve flat and actually I'm seeing nine day vol now. Drop below VIX. Um, that is never a bullish sign for VIX and is usually a bullish sign for SPX. So I've got another couple of put flies I got to close in SPY right now, so I probably better do it because um, the sell-off that I was looking for is not going to materialize. It made a little bit, but um, we didn't get the big like the big humdinger so far. Um, so anyway, Volman is noticing the flatter curve is usually – um, it usually ends up uh, being better for SPX in the next day or two and not as good for uh, VIX. So that's what Wallman sees right now. And unless that changes by the end of the day, you know, we're probably going to see a little bit of rally in SPX from here and probably a recovery tomorrow in SPX. So if that vol holds up, because people are going to start voting with their feet and their dollars. I thought I was tossing it to my resident cynic, but here you are giving us this optimistic look at the I'm going to turn around, ball's going to start coming in. Look at you, Uncle Mike in it here on the show, Mr. Rock. Don't you know your role on the show by now, sir? He's the optimist. You're the cynic. <laughs> 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 Point counterpoints out there. But yes, intriguing stuff afoot here. Let's see what's lighting it up 
from an overall markets perspective right now. And Vic's kind of agreeing with the Rock Lobster. They're not blowing the doors off from a volume perspective. It's actually pretty much right where it should be, I suppose, at about 320,000 contracts. That's almost exactly half of its ADV. Its ADV is about 640. It's at about 318 right now. So pretty much halfway there. So Vix is telling you it's kind of a mostly normal day. That ADV has ticked up, obviously, 640. Getting close to that 700K level again that we were at not too long ago, then abandoned very quickly. Got back down to the 400,000 level. And now back up to 640, given all the action we talked about in those last nine days, which apparently are not being reflected at all in the nine-day VIX, which is always a weird sign. Spy at about 3.4 million contracts right now. Uh, the ADV six and about three quarters a million out there. So Spy looking decently robust as well. The SPX, it's like the land that time forgot. Only 632,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, the ADV 1.78 million. So a surprising disconnect there between the S and Spy. And uh, small caps outpacing IWM, or excuse me, small caps outpacing SPX, at least the IWM flavor, 625,000 contracts on the tape in IWM. You know what? That small cap ADV, IWM ADV, back up to pretty much a million again, 995,000. So we retreated away from that pretty quickly, and now we're right back up there, listeners over there. Let's get on out to what we're seeing from an overall Top 10 most active today. You could probably guess what maybe is holding down the number one spot. Maybe. Can anything possibly unseat the dominance of Tesla and Apple? We shall find out in a little bit. By the way, you know, we're looking at a pretty robust day from a single name perspective today. When we're at about 287,000 contracts to break into the top 10. That's right around that 300K barometer that I use to say, okay, you know what? We're seeing a pretty frothy day out there in the single names as well because looking at the index numbers you don't really see anything really blowing the doors off of it outside of really a spy and some small caps amazon right now number 10 287 000 contracts on the tape for amazon a number nine qualcomm 310 so at number nine we're already up over 300k usually in some quiet days that could be you know number four could be at 300k so pretty robust day out there qualcomm 310 000 contracts number eight it's paypal 335,000 contracts. It's like Facebook is just dragging a lot of names <laughs> into the mud with them out there these days. Let's see where, where PayPal is hanging out right now. They're off five, about 6% right now. So uh, taking a bit of a drubbing out there as well. I think they had some numbers that weren't exactly robust out there as well. It's worst ever trading day yesterday. So yeah, rough times for PayPal. Number seven, NVIDIA. 368,000 contracts. A day that ends in Y, you're going to see some chip names in here. We've already seen Qualcomm, NVIDIA here. All right behind them, number six, AMD, 507,000. They're usually good for a number four, number three spot, but today down to number six, and they've still done 507,000 contracts. That shows you kind of how active the top half of our top 10 is today. Number five, it's good old Ford listeners. They're kind of acting like a meme a lot these days. Selling off about 2.3%, still north of the 20 handle. Right now, listeners, they, of course, have earnings after the bell today. So you're probably going to see some muted reaction from them until we see that number later today. How are all these lightnings and F-150s? How's the chip shorting imp- shortage impacting them? A lot of things to keep an eye on, but already 659,000 contracts on the tape for Ford. That's nothing to sneeze at. Number four, it's Snap. Yeah, we were talking about them earlier. They're feeling the, they're feeling the f- reflective fire from Facebook out there as well, taking a hit as well, off 21, almost 21 and a half percent right now, trading around right around the 25 and a quarter level or so, but still good for 662,000 contracts out there. We're not, we don't even have uh, the snap earnings yet. People are just crushing them in anticipation after what Facebook said out there. So snap. Yeah. By the way, who still uses, who still uses snap out there? Hit us up. Let us know if you do. It seems like, Seems like TikTok has really eaten all of their lunch out there in the tween social media set out there. Number five, excuse me, number three. Number three, I said, yes. How was the last time we said Apple was number three, listeners? But here they are today. Apple kind of just uh, waiting and seeing, watching the rest of the market today at number three. Only 733,000 contracts on the tape. Apple's almost unched on the day. Apple's kind of shrugging all this news off. They're kind of watching it saying, look what we did to you, Facebook, <laughs> which, by the way, I'm an Android guy, but I had to get a new iPad before Christmas since I was setting it up recently. And it is kind of surprising how aggressive Apple is with that stuff of do you want this app to track you? They they pretty much put it in your face every time, so much so that all these apps are now kind of begging you. They're like, hey, please, 
please enable this. We need this for our business and everything. So you could easily see if you're even the mighty Facebook, if you're living on someone else's platform, you live at their behest and at their whim. And they could they could turn the screws against you in a second. Apple clearly doing that right now. Not only 733,000 contracts on the tape. That's roughly half of what we might see in a day like today for Apple. So Apple kind of quiet. Number two is Tesla. Yes, number two out there. Tesla, 934,000 contracts. Bucking the trend actually up today, back over the 900 handle again today. Not quite at that 1,000 level, right around a little bit shy of 920 right now. But still good for 934,000 contracts. And number one out there, you probably guessed it. It's the big dog today. It's Facebook getting annihilated 26%. 239 and change out there right now off about 84 handles on the day good for almost 1.6 million contracts listeners that is nothing to sneeze at what are your thoughts on facebook given all this uh, just aggressive nature of the sell-off you like uncle mike would you take a long-term stock position here uh, you like the rock lobster you want a little bit more downside i think you said you wanted to sell 70 handles up. that's not like the rock lobster to be greedy or nothing <laughs> 70 handles more he wants <laughs> but uh, after getting 84 already in the in the overnight but say la vie are you selling some out of the money puts here in facebook you think this is dead money for the next six months or so as well or is this perhaps uh, the start of something interesting what do you think about what apple's doing to them and how that's playing out a lot to unpack there in the world of facebook speaking of earnings let's just crunch some of the numbers all these reports, listeners, the earnings move, the earnings move results, the earnings season, and the newly minted earnings trades reports all available for you folks anytime you want over there at theoptionsinsider.com. Click on the options, news, and articles tab to find them there. All the latest hot off the presses right from our friends at Orats right before showtime because it is a big week, listeners. We had everyone's favorite, Otis Elevators on Monday. Huge name. <laughs> Tuesday, we had Exxon, UPS, PayPal, Alphabet and GM, as well as good old S Bucks and Electronic Arts. Yesterday, of course, Meta and Spotify. Today, we have Merck, Amazon, Ford, Snap, and Eli Lilly, as well as uh, Activision Blizzard and the old WWE popping off after the bell today. And of course, uh, the earnings not exactly robust. The earnings move results reports hot off the presses from our friends at Orats. Facebook, obviously, getting drubbed. They went to their announcement 323 listeners. And as of this report, they were at 246. Obviously, they've sold off since then as well. So they were pricing in a little less than 5%. They delivered 24% to the dark side. Of course, they're off 26%. Now, uh, Spotify, they went into their announcement 191.92. They're pricing in 8.1%, and they delivered 14.6%. So nearly double that. Let's see where they're hanging out right now. Of course, Spotify in a bit of a kerfuffle now with the artist's getting up in arms over there about uh, all Joe Rogan off nearly 17% now for Spotify. So yeah, more than doubling their straddle to the dark side out there. Let's look really quickly as well. Uh, let's go out to, uh, let's go to the drugs really quickly. Eli Lilly and Mark's go to Merck first. They were this morning before the bell, 82 bucks even is where they went into their announcement. They were pricing in 2.2%. They delivered, guess what? 2.2%. So nothing to look at here on the Merck front. Eli Lilly, they went into the announcement this morning as well, about 251. They're pricing in 3.3%. They delivered about 2.7%. So yet again, a bit of a shrug out there in the drug makers. Yesterday after the bell, we had Qualcomm 188.20 is what they went into their announcement at. They're pricing in 5.6%. And so far, as of this report, listeners, they had delivered 2.7%. So obviously underperforming. Of course, if we change that frame of reference a bit, hold on to it a little bit longer. They've actually rallied a little bit since then. So they're actually off. A little bit less right now. They're at about 184. They're at about 183 when they ran this report. So Qualcomm actually getting some of that back. So if you sold premium out there and held on to it, it's looking even worse right now. Let's go on out a little bit farther out. All right. We have a lot of other move results reports. You guys can check out all those dozens upon dozens of chickers for yourselves. Let's get on out to the season right now. We are in week three, listeners. Week one was pretty robust, 101%. That compares to the Long-term average of 82%, so decent outperformance there. Week two came in about 70% when it was all said and done. That's better still than the long-term average, 66%. And week three looking robust right now, 113%. So that means we are outperforming the straddles out there right now, listeners. And the average for this week is 91%. So the season's still looking decent at about 85%. And again, given the pandemic era, it's actually a pretty decent number. So Check that out for yourselves as well. Let's go on out to the earnings trades reports. Yeah, we got some new ones, listeners. 
Matt and his team hard at work crunching the numbers for you. They looks like they're buying some straddles out here, buying a bunch of straddles here and a bunch of different names, ALGN, CAH, RFP, uh, selling some straddles out here as well. And yeah, even, and then also some new straddles from this morning here. It looks like in Amazon and actually no, a calendar. They bought a calendar in Amazon and they bought some straddles and some other names. So earnings trades coming at you hot and heavy listeners. They'll tell you the entry point. They'll tell you where they exit, how it performs, all sorts of great stuff. And again, we must like you folks. We give it to you all for free. Theoptionsinsider.com. Click on the earnings news, or I should say the options news and articles tab to begin your journey. Let's look really quickly at a couple of names that are popping off today. Then we got to keep on rolling. The Eye of Sauron is waiting for us here. We got Amazon after the bell today, 3,012. <laughs> As of this report, they were pricing in 216 and a half. In the past, they've moved $116. So fully $100 worth of extra juice. Is that merited? I guess we'll find out. Activision, after the bell, of course, they're kind of caught up in that deal now with Microsoft, so that's probably going to mute things a little bit. They're pricing in about a buck and a half. In the past, they've moved 370 so obviously pricing in a lot less juice. And Ford, everyone's looking at Ford right now. 2063, when they crunched these numbers this morning, they were pricing in a buck 55. In the past, they've moved 81 cents, so pretty much 2x what they've moved in the past. Kind of hard to argue against that for Ford. I lied. A couple more. Snap. 32 bucks even as of this report. They're popping off after the bell today. They're pricing in five bucks. In the past, they moved five and a half. So actually a little bit less juice. We've already seen an apocalyptic move in Snap. So I guess the rest is just gravy at this point. And WWE after the bell today, 49 and a half is where they were as, as of this report. They're pricing in 326. In the past, they moved 381. So a little bit less vol. Is, that, is, is there less vol in those wrestling waters out there? Hit us up. Let us know. Oh, one more. So I'm talking about Vol. One more. I lied. One more. Tomorrow, before the bell. SIBO. Talking about Vol out there. SIBO. All about VIX. They were at 120 even as of this report. They're pricing in 333. In the past, they moved about 260. So a little bit extra. Actually, a fair amount of extra juice out there in SIBO land. Is that merited? They're going to put up the VIX numbers to merit these Vol levels and these valuation levels? We shall find out tomorrow, listeners. Meanwhile, it's time to find out what our Eye of Sauron has found for us today. It is time for the Odd Block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody, welcome to the eye block, the portion of the show, we unleash the eye of Sauron and we see what it has found for us today. A lot of people in our in our live chat here talking about Facebook. I can't blame you. <laughs> There's some action in Facebook today. And it seems like our eye of Sauron has also fixated upon Facebook today. In fact, uh, Matt and his team at ORATS, they also run some unusual activity scans and they've identified Facebook as the second highest n- name on their list today. They look at the volume today versus the 20-day moving average. They're at about 3x right now so uh, facebook already had done uh, let's see about a little over a million contracts when they ran this versus their normal average of about three hundred sixty nine thousand. so facebook on a tier out there i have sauron looking at it today as well a lot of paper flying fast and furious out there a lot of rolling down of puts and things like that but we try to find some of the needles in the haystack for you listeners some of the interesting kind of opening new trades that are popping in in the midst of all this chaos and the whirlwind out there and our eye of Sauron today landed on this one. They are the April 240 put. So it looks like someone perhaps is, uh, is, is deciding on a little bit more downside here in good old FB. Of course, really quickly, I'll give you the year's saga in Facebook. A year ago, Facebook wasn't that far from where it is right now. It was at 266. Then it had a nice run, of course, all the way up to 384.33. That what came in first week of september of last year and since then it's had some chop but it's mostly been to the downside even still it was hanging out north of 300 until this week (laughs) it was at about 320 again until all this news broke so now we're back to 238 and about a half as of right now so selling off 10 percent now for the entire year so interesting stuff out here looks like someone is a little bit spooked 
for some more continued downside because they were scooping up some puts, scooping up some pride, pretty much at the money protection, now in the money protection here on the 240 strike, coming in and scooping up 5,860 of the April 240 puts. And since these are pretty much at the money puts, listeners, they paid a pretty pretty penny for these right after the earnings announcement. They paid $15.80. That works out to about a 43 vol. Uh, so they pretty much lifted the offer on these. And you know you're going to expect that right in the middle of an earnings apocalypse. Vol is going to be juicy. And that pretty much results in paying $16 <laughs> for some at-the-money puts in, in Facebook here. The stock was a little bit higher at the time. Stock was two forty four seventy two. So it's gone their way since then. So that's going to help. Obviously, the vol, once we kind of reach the apex of the sell-off, the vol is going to start to peter out a little bit. So that's going to come back to bite them but still overall i'll have to pull up see how these these puts are looking right now but overall these the trend is their friend at least for right now out here by the way the next earnings if you're wondering in facebook not until april 27th so these puts i'm gonna go out on a limb and say april 27th is beyond let me look here yes it is beyond april expiration april expiration is on the 15th so 27th a few weeks beyond that so these are not going to hedge you through the next earning cycle it just gets you Pretty much close to it, and that's about it. So, Mr. Rock Lobster, starting off your day, looks like the flight from Meta has begun, or at the very least, the concern over continued downside in Meta, because we got someone paying up a pretty penny for some April puts here in Facebook. What say you, sir? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I'd, it's, I have to say that's not my favorite trade right now. <laughs> How did I know that you wouldn't, you wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't float your boat, sir? I just uh, I just put on a February uh, uh, one by two put spread in there, uh, buying one, selling two to get me my stock at two hundred. Uh, so I will take my small dollars because uh, I think the stock will continue to be weak. Uh, but I don't know if it's going to be weak enough for those big fat puts to pay. That's my question. So it's it's again buying those puts when the ball is super high. Um, I have to say, it's not my, you know, you have the day after earnings and volatility is up on the day, um, which I don't think is, um, it's usually not a recipe for success. So let's see. Uh, although, okay, although I'll eat my words, they're 240 puts. They are up $2. Yeah, they're 18, 18 bucks right now. So they're looking all right yeah. on those. <laughs> so as on our as our rule, the day after you buy them and they're, they're up money on the close, that's always a good that's always a good sign. So maybe they, uh, I wonder when they bought these things. Do you have a more stock reference? Oh, 244.72. 244. Oh, yeah. so stock's not six bucks. Yeah, okay. so stock has moved their way, yes. <clears throat> so they've got a, so just for earnings, so they bought a 40 delta, uh, just just out of 50 delta put, and they got a about a $2 lift on a $6 move. So you can see that the volatility is coming in slightly uh, on those puts already, but um anyway like i i still think the stock is going to be dead money for a while um i'd probably be a good long-term buy but uh it, it's going to be a little bit jiggy here for i think a little while yeah from experience in my intel days uh when we had that mega sell-off intel pre-announced bad earnings and they got annihilated and uh that was one of the first big tech names to do that back in the dot-com bubble and once the stock kind of reaches the the nadir of the sell-off looks like facebook maybe bottoming out here around 240 or so uh, once this, it hits that and bounces off it a few times, the vol just craters. And so yep. uh, if, that's, if that happens here in Facebook, it looks like it might already be happening. These puts are going to come in. So they got their delta. It worked for them. They had about a 50 delta. They got six bucks worth of movement. So you can do the math. They're going to get about three bucks on these puts, listeners. But uh, if all things stay the same throughout the rest of the day. Obviously, we can take another leg down, and that could all change. But if things stay the same right now, this vol is probably going to crater pretty soon, and these puts... Probably we'd be back to not that far away from where they bought them, not that long from now, especially if we keep rallying out here. So interesting stuff. It's always difficult to kind of pick the moment when you should get in for the vol listeners right after the earnings of the apocalypse hits because you got to kind of let it settle out a little bit and see where the stock settles out. Then you can kind of find your levels and start picking your levels there. But you do that ahead of time. You are quite literally catching a falling knife sometimes. So we'll see. We'll come back to these and see how they fare. We'll put them in our to-be-wash. Meanwhile, let's go out to another name. That's getting reflexively 
getting the crap kicked out of it today. <laughs> they haven't even had earnings yet. <laughs> People just think, oh, crap, that happened to Facebook. This is going to happen to Snap, too, because Snap just taken it on the chin at about 25 bucks right now, off nearly 7 bucks, about 21.5%. Let's look at the year that has been out there in Snap. By the way, you guys you still use Snap? I think we have a Snap for Options Inside. I don't think we've ever even really used it. So <laughs> I think we even had the spectacles lying around the studio here somewhere. I don't think we ever even fired them up. So never really got big on the Snap. But uh, yeah, 59 bucks is where it was a year ago, listeners. And then it had a nice journey. It bounced around the 50s to the 60s for the first half of the year. In July, it shot up from about 60 bucks up to 78. And then it hovered around there, got up to its 52-week high on September 24th of about 83.34. And then ever since then, it never really looked back. It sold off again to about the low mid-70s on October 18th. Then they came for it hard in October. I'm guessing their earnings not the best. On October 21st, went from 75 bucks down to 55 in one overnight session. So reminiscent of what we're seeing with Facebook right now. And then it kind of trended lower from there down to uh, 28 bucks. Actually, 33 bucks was where it was going into Facebook's number yesterday. And then, of course, back down to 25 bucks. So the tail of the tape, not exactly robust here for Snap. But you know what? Someone's saying this is overdone, listeners, because our eye of Sauron has found us this morning. Someone betting on a bit of a long-term retracement, a bit of a bounce here in Snap, and they're willing to put their money where their mouth is to the, ter- to the tune of 3,000 of the Jan 30s going out next year, Jan 2023, for $4.65. They lifted the offer on these bad boys. Those are pretty beefy as well. The stock at the time was twenty five eleven, so these were about 5 bucks out of the money, and they paid another almost 5 bucks for them, so they need a nice move here. That's about a 63 vol, so that is... Again, that's a pretty robust vol level for Snap. <laughs> uh, but again, they're getting in ahead of earnings. Who knows? Maybe Snap could come out and blow the doors off, and they could be taking these calls off tomorrow. But still, intriguing stuff here. Mr. Rock Lobster, a bit of a flipping of the script after someone uh, panicking to the downside in Facebook. This person saying, you know what? I'm going to play it cool. I'm going to play it loose. I'm going to spend some money, but I think I'm going to step in front of this freight train. I say Snap. Higher rather than lower by next January. What say you, sir? Again, like you got this high vol and you just pan out the wazoo for these calls. Um, what was Snap? 55 bucks at one point this year, I think. Got up to 83. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, well, if, it, if you make that kind of rally again, I think that they're going to be looking pretty smart on the Jan 2330s. Um Interesting, 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 interesting. Um, well, let's see here. Well, according to our our normal, uh, the Jan twenty three thirties, they're 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 right now they are doing okay. Their their calls are on the bid. So, um, at least from a purchase point of view, the day the day they got in, it's not a terrible day. Um, what I would say about these is, um. Wow, they're just god dang. That's just it's just pricey. They're pricey options. What can I say? So, however, in a year, if the stock is fifty dollars, it's not going to matter. Um, and they look relatively financeable. I mean, you can sell the twenty puts for three dollars and sixty cents. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they got. I say they have a shot based on uh, what could happen, but that's that's not exactly. I think it maybe maybe it's a stock replacement, right? So. Let's say if you're long 50,000 shares or, or, you know, it looks like 300,000 uh, deltas total um, on the trade. So maybe they were long stock and they want to do a replacement. Um, get rid of, let's say, get rid of their stock and then buy maybe three times the delta in calls. So um, it could be a stock replacement strategy as well. I don't know. But that generally tends to bode well when everything looks just the darkest looks everybody, you know everybody wants to hide under their desk in technology today um you know getting buy more deltas maybe get rid of your stock and buy more deltas is not a terrible idea i'll say not terrible not, not terrible. terrible interesting i don't know if i like the buying the deltas out of the money usually like a little bit meatier but it's a 20 dollars stock i guess how much are you going to spend on these options at a certain point you just buy the stock <laughs> so uh, so yeah but interesting stuff here with these we'll come back to you like these listeners you're a fan of these you think snap's gonna rebound here i think this is all much ado about nothing would you be putting your money where your mouth is or you would you be 
perhaps looking at other trades out here. Speaking of looking at other trades, look really quickly. Mr. Rock Lobster, dial your way back machine all the way back to the heady days of January 3rd, our first trading day of this year. Oh, we were all so young and innocent back then on January 3rd. We had never heard of a four and a quarter percent and then uh, sell off in NASDAQ and then reversal on the same day, at least not for some time. All right, but now we've got, uh, we were looking at the time on that show, listeners, some puts in a newcomer to the show. It was sleep number. At the time, someone came in and blasted out 4,369 of the Jan 70 puts in sleep number for 41 cents. That was below the bid. The bid was 45 cents, so they crushed these things. The vol was about a 47, and we, we, we didn't hate these, I don't think, but uh, they were kind of interesting. Uh, and Mr. Rock Lobsters, they sold the 70 puts. Guess where the stock went out on expirations? So I'll get, take a wild guess. I'm going to just take, I'm not looking at it. I'm going to say just above the strike. <laughs> Close. Just below 69.82. oh still that that was that's pretty close yeah so they went out pretty much exactly at the strike a little bit in the money obviously the puts went out at about oh looks like about 18 cents and he sold them for 41 so he he pocketed a nice 23 cents or he ended up buying the stock at about 69 dollars and 59 cents which right now looks like a decent trade because the stock's up about a buck from there it's about 70 and a half right now so he he's now the proud owner of some sleep number at around 69.60 or so out there, listeners. Or you can look at it on the puts. He made about 100 grand on these bad boys. So not bad, all things considered, even though he had to sweat for it a little bit as we keep on rolling. We never have to sweat for your questions, though, because they're always awesome. And it's time for the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, let's get out there to the mail block. Our live chat still talking about maybe some put sell in here in Facebook, as well as uh, the benefits that Facebook reaped from uh, getting the uh, AT and T losing the exclusivity to the iPhone. That was a big deal back in the day. We forget that when the early days iPhone was exclusive to AT and T, and it sucked. I had an iPhone early in those days, and I got that rid of it because it was terrible. But uh, long, long water under the bridge at this point. Let's get on out here to what you folks are saying right now. Uh, we have a couple of questions of the week that are live right now. Get in there if you haven't already at Options. Make your voice heard. We asked you guys, uh, what are your preferred trades in high skew environments? I'll just run these down really quickly because we're kind of coming up against it. Uh, we've got uh, long puts or spreads or collars, short puts, spreads, or bullish risk reversal. So selling the put, buying the call. Put butterfly slash ratios or other and selling the puts slash spread slash bullying bullish risk reversals. Easy for me to say is winning right now with a whopping 56% of the vote, about 19% for the other side, long puts or collars, and then a tie 12 and a half percent for put flies and other. Again, if you're right, if you choose other, tell us what your other is. We like to hear it. Maybe you have some esoteric strategy that we have never heard of. Probably not, but you never know. It's always fun. And we also have another question of the week. A lot of you are starting to scoop up some of these hot pandemic names that are kind of trading at let's shall we say lower levels right now uh which of these former high flyers are you thinking about adding to your turnaround or bargain hunting portfolios right now gave you three choices and the other gave you peloton robin hood amc and then the much beloved other for other we've got rocket a lot of people wrote in for rocket uh as well as uh, DraftKings and uh space and some others so yeah we probably should have added rocket maybe given the I don't know. Dan was talking about Rocket yesterday and Bootcamp as well. So a lot of you like yourself some Rocket. Uh, but right now, the winner of our poll is Robinhood, 61%, followed by 22% for AMC, 11% for Peloton, and about almost 6% for others. So get out there. You got about a day left. Get out there at options if you haven't done so already, listeners, and make your voice heard. Uh, speaking of making your voice heard, um, we got a question here from Ellis. Actually, a funny one. He says, Uncle Mike hates crypto. Well, we all know that. He's made his views very clear. He says, what about the Rock Lobster? So Mr. Rock Lobster, <laughs> he wants to know, what are your thoughts on crypto? You hate it like Uncle Mike or do you love it? <laughs> uh, I don't hate it. I don't love it. I just ignore it. I think it's all just going to be a big puddle. Oh, take a stand and get on the field, you water boy. You come on. <laughs> Um, I, I just think it's a, it's a fad. It's going to go away. You know, it's, it's then not, you hate maybe it. it's, huh? Then you hate it. I, I, I guess so. I hate it. There you go. I, he's going to make hey. me say, it's not that I hate it. I just ignore it. I ignore it. Doesn't even, it doesn't even, 
it doesn't even get on my radar screen. So you're not holding a bunch of Sheba like the rest of us here. I know Uncle Mike's got a ton of secret Sheba. A lot of our listeners do. So you're not you're not, uh, you're not Sheba Inuing over there on the shores of Maine, Mr. Rock Lobster. Uh, I'm not yet, and I'm and I'm thrilled that some some people have made you know untold millions and hundreds of millions of dollars on it. Congratulations, but I did not. So it just it's like one of those things. I don't get it. So I don't get it. I don't trade it. I don't look at it. Uh, I've traded coin a little bit, and made some money in the that underlying, but that's about it. So uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, not a holdler. We know Uncle Mike's not a holdler, but uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, not a holdler as well. We got more questions, but you know what? We got to get to it as we go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on until our next episode. Let's go out to the unclest of Mike's, who never sits on the fence when it comes to crypto. He is now the proud owner of BitcoinSucks.com. I do believe he's shelled out for that one, about 25 grand. So, Uncle Mike, A, was it worth the purchase? And then B, what else is on your radar, sir? You know what? I'm just going to just maybe I should just buy Bitcoin now because I've hated it so much. Maybe just the psychology in me makes me want to like it. So who knows? Um, No, we should do. You should buy some Bitto options. You could collar them pretty nicely out there. You have some options you can do with them. And at least you have something you could talk about on the show. Bitcoin, you kind of just got a holder. I can't really do much with it. Right. But you trade some Bitto. You could trade some options around it. And it gets a little more interesting. What do you think? I think I'll pass, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Upon further review, I think I'll pass. <laughs> no two-year collars and bid What's going on? Uh, I don't know. Well, what I am looking at right now is that uh, we've been holding the 4,500 mark in the SPX throughout the day. So I'm going to be watching towards the end of the day to see if we can hold that. As well as tomorrow, uh, we have non-farm. I think that uh, whenever you're by a key number like this, it's something that we need to keep an eye on. So definitely watching that. Uh, watching the 10-year note, we're having a little bit of a sell-off today on it. So seeing if we can, we're towards the bottom of the range again. And so seeing if we can bounce back on from that. And um, that's pretty much it right now. And that music means we're coming up against it here, listeners. But don't worry. If you're saying, I need more in my ear holes, special treat just for you, listeners. And because Uncle Mike is a prima donna. Guess who's joining me on Twifo coming up next it's the unclest of mics, and we're going to give you a surprise treat. No waiting in the live chat or anything like that. We're going to go right into Twifo after this show. So stay tuned for that, listeners. Should be fun. Listen in after the fact. Then, of course, just hit next. It'll be available on your platform of choice immediately there. But Mr. Rock Lobster, same question for you. What are you keeping an eye on for the rest of this week, at least until maybe Bob views tomorrow? And then if folks want to hit you up, reach out to you, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, you can come on optionpit.com and I'm, what am I looking at? If VIX holds, we're in the danger zone again. If it holds this, if this Facebook sell-off becomes something worse, so a very key level right there. We keep 4,500, 24 VIX, key level. And where should they go if they want to learn more from the Mr. Ball Man? Uh, yes, optionpit.com. Remember, 10% off anything you order. You say you go call Ted, 888-TRADE-01, and you call Ted, 10% off anything at Option Pit. If you tell him that you heard me on this show, there you go. Can you call Ted whatever you want? What if you insult his mother? Will he still give you a 10% off? <laughs> uh, Ted has pretty thick skin. However, I think, it, you know, be nice to Ted. <laughs> okay, be nice to Ted. <laughs> you want the uh, discount after all, so be nice to Ted. Don't yes, just call him whatever you discount. want. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Optionpit.com to learn more. Remember, of course, I'll be joined again by the Rock Lobster tomorrow night for all you Secret Club fans. Breaking down all these crazy trades we have. Our portfolio for doing that show of options oddities continues to grow, listeners. <laughs> of course, Rock Lobster bailed on some of his. We got to give him a hard time. That'll come up tomorrow after Ball Views. So stay tuned for that. And, of course, Mr. Uncle Mike, we're going to hear you again in a little bit on Twifo. But for those folks just listening to the option block right now, they want to check out the unclest of Mike's on all your various platforms. Where should they go? What should they do? Uh, a couple things you can I have some videos that I've released on YouTube. I have some more recorded, but I still need to release them at this point. Just getting some things finished up at this stage. Uh, type in St. Charles Wealth Management. You can follow me on Twitter at Mike Tosaw, T-O-S-A-W. Um, I did not get enough new followers, so I will not be doing a webinar on Row. But if I do get 100 new followers in the next week or so, I will do a webinar on Row if that's what the people want. Um and uh, also, feel free to check out my website, stcharleswealth.com. 
Uh, if you're looking to work with a financial advisor who works with the option product very frequently. Oh, that poll has one minute left. Listeners, I'm going to retweet his poll again really quickly. Should he do the webinar on row? Get in there. Make your voice heard right now. 74% of you saying they want the webinars. Uncle Mike, the people have spoken. I don't know. You're, you're kind of flying in the face of the demands of the people. Get out there on Twitter right now, listeners, and vote in that poll. We have retweeted it for you if you want that webinar. And give them a follow while you're at it, at Mike Tussaud, all one word, T-O-S-A-W. We got to get on out of here. But like I said, if you're listening live, back again instantaneously in your ear holes with a little bit of this week in futures options, and then back again tomorrow, noon central. 1 p.m. Eastern Volatility Views right after that for Options Oddities. Then back again next Monday, another episode of the Option Block. We'll see you then. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.